This is one thing that annoyed me too about this conversation. Because when black Americans say we are black American, we have our own culture, uh, we have our own history, you guys call it isolation. Black Americans are not the only people that say we are this, we have our own culture, and we have our own history. You can't mix all black people into one history. My ancestors did not do what the Haitians did with the Haitian um, revolt. I can't claim their history. I can't claim their culture. I can't claim what they, what they did. What they did should be respected, and they should be honored and respected for what they, what they did. Same thing as Jamaicans and other black people. But black Americans should be respected for our history, our culture, and what our ancestors did as well. Not, it's not isolation. If you are African worldwide, I don't care if you're in the United States or if you're in Africa. I don't care. You need to shut up and be humble and learn from black Americans and maybe your continent will become better and stronger. For centuries, black men and black women helped molded America in a superpower. Without people like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, those are hardworking people who risked and died just for you to have a right to come over here and go to school, for you to come over here and make a living in my country. You want to disrespect black Americans saying we don't have a culture? We have the best culture in the world. For centuries, my people created some of the best inventions in world history. Everybody copy us with our music, our food, the way we dance, the way we dress, the way we talk, our styles. We, we not from no different tribes. We have great cultures in, 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 in America. We are the most copied culture in world history. Africans are on this social media. They looking very stupid, very ignorant. And my thing is to the ones that come here and, and try to uh, act like they better than black Americans. Go back home. Go to Africa. Build your own lands up. I'm not from Africa. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. My people from the United States. My whole thing is if Africa has all these resources, Africa has all these great, great things in Africa, diamond mines, fruit trees, uh, great soil. Uh, you could plant all kinds of foods in Africa, yet so many of y'all live so poor but y'all want to criticize black Americans and the ones that come here and act like they don't want, even want to associate with black Americans, my people. I don't have no respect for Africans like that. Without people like Malcolm X, Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to start that business in America. You wouldn't be able to go to them schools in America. You wouldn't be able to do a lot of things without black Americans. So you should be thankful for black Americans. They criticize us all the time. But my thing is, black Americans didn't run for centuries. My people got lynched. They got killed. They lost so many things, but yet we stayed and we built America. We didn't run. And I think the biggest part in the issue and the problem a lot of foreigners have with black Americans, we can't be deported. If you're from Africa, you could get deported. If you're from Jamaica, yes, you can get deported. If you're from the islands, you can get deported. And these foreigners, I think in general, I don't care if you're from Mexico, you need to come over here. Outsiders need to come to America and be humble, be thankful for black Americans. Without black Americans, America wouldn't have been a superpower. We still a superpower. Without black Americans, 
this country would would pretty much be nothing without black Americans. And we we get so much uh, judgment all the time. And yet y'all want to run over here. Y'all want to come over here on boats. Y'all want to come over here any way y'all can. Y'all will cut y'all hand off to get to America. Yet you want to get here and you want to criticize black Americans. Y'all want to talk so much about how, oh, we have culture. We have history. We know where our family from. And y'all try to make us feel bad. But look what we built in America. We have y'all copy us, Africans copy our music, copy our dances, copy everything that black Americans do. Y'all try, people try to steal our culture worldwide. Chinese people, Mexicans, Jamaicans, everybody trying to be like black Americans, yet y'all don't want to give us our credit. We are the culture of the world. Okay, we not no top three, we not no top five, nothing. Country music jazz music, hip-hop, every genre of music was started by my people, black Americans. And if you keep coming over here, judging us, criticizing black Americans nationwide, you're going to get humble one way, or the other. one way or the other. I can promise you, black Americans will humble you. I don't care if you're from Nigeria I don't care what country you're from in, in the continent of Africa. You will come and you will show respect to black Americans worldwide. We don't need you in America. We never needed Africans in America. Hell, even going back to slavery, kings and queens in Africa, yes, your continent of Africa sold us out for centuries. The white man just didn't come over there and take us at will. Africans sold us out from the very beginning. So don't pretend like, you know, Africans, you know, we, we have all these thousands, uh, we have all this history in Africa, yet y'all want to come to America. The majority of y'all want to come to America. The majority of Africans, if they can trade places with us, they would trade places with us. I get tired of all this criticism. Black Americans are some of the greatest people in the world. The, the foundation of greatness is in America. This is our country. So I, I need I need Africans I need Africans to be more humble when they when they come to America. So if you live in, in America, be humble. Learn the history of black Americans. You know, you need to talk more. You need to hang out. You need to be around more black Americans and understand our culture. We are the culture of the world, not just America. So all this criticism, it, it has to do with a lot of uh, deep-rooted jealousy. People for centuries of all colors have been jealous of black Americans, even Though we went through what we went through and still going through today. We are God's chosen people. So when you want to talk about tribes, this is our entire tribe in America. This is our culture nationwide. So black, uh, black Americans, we don't have to keep on, uh, you know, getting mad at their ignorance. Africans as a whole. Many of them are, is just looking like very stupid people and they need to get more educated instead of trying to criticize black Americans. They should be trying to learn from us uh, that they can go back. Then they can go back home and they can help uplift their people some instead of trying to run to our country. My thing is, if the continent of Africa, if Nigeria is so special, if Ghana is so special, if all these African countries are, are so special, why not just stay in your country? Why not build Nigeria? If you if you so educated, why not take the other uh, Nigerians that have degrees and are educated, build your own country up instead of running to my country, yet you want to run to America, but then criticize black Americans 
the, the very people who giving you an opportunity to come to America, but you want to criticize America, talking about, you know, uh, my people uh, was enslaved for centuries. You know, y'all don't know where y'all from. Y'all can't, y'all can't track y'all family history. And we hear that so much, yet we are the most creative people in the world. Africans got to stop all this negativity and be humble and be thankful for black Americans. So when, when you talk about the world, nothing moves without black Americans. My whole thing with Africa, if Africa is so special, stay in your own country. Why do you have to uh, why do Africans always have to run to the United States? I don't care if you're a regular African, I don't care if you're a famous African. I don't care if you're a star. Stay in your own continent. Uplift your own people. Black Americans is not begging Africans to come to the United States. So even to the people outside of Africa, uh other black foreigners in in Britain Jamaica, the islands, if you have a problem with black Americans, stay in your own lands. Black Americans, we always been by ourselves. Nobody didn't never really unite with us. We always stand on our own. We never had no allies. So even with Africans worldwide, we don't have no true allies with most Africans. It's like most Africans hate black Americans. It's like most Africans are, are jealous of the greatness of the black American woman and the black American man. No, I'm, I don't consider myself no African American. I'm a black American. I'm from America. My people from America. So don't try to make us feel bad just because we live in one of the greatest nations in the world. Again, we built the United States. My people paid their dues for centuries. My people got hanged from trees. My people got shot and killed and still getting shot and killed by police. My people still getting hanged from trees. We have sundown towns. We have all kind of odds against us and, and, and yet we don't run. Yet we still thrive. Yet we still survive. Yet we still come out with creations. Yet we still come out with hit songs. Yet we still are the best actors and actresses in the world. When it comes to movie, when it comes to sports, everything revolves around black Americans. We have the best style in the world. We have the most millionaires and billionaires in the world of black people. We have the greatest athletes in the world. Don't nobody care about no soccer. Black Americans don't care nothing about no soccer in America. That's a little soft sport. We care about baseball. Football, basketball, we laugh at, 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 at people, <laughs> you know, making a big deal out of soccer. We don't care nothing about no soccer in America. We love real sports. And, and look at the Olympics. Look at the Olympics. Every four years, who win the most goals most times? Black Americans. Black Americans. Why? Because we are the greatest athletes and innovators in the world. Africans need to, they need to build up Africa and stop criticizing black Americans. I y'all looking stupid, really. But that's all I got to say about that. I'm gonna say this one thing about this whole black Americans don't have culture. Y'all don't know where y'all from. I honestly I wish this debate would end because it's always us. For for black Americans to so-called not know where they come from, even though we do know where we come from, we come from the Americas, it baffles me how all other black or African people and everywhere else want to always attack black Americans. Why y'all always attacking us? Because we have the most prominent culture. If we didn't have the most prominent culture, nobody wouldn't be coming for us. But the reality of it is, is, Black Americans, whether it is positive or not, we built our own culture that's based off of our black experience in America. Everybody be copping it. Everybody, even Afri the Africans be copping it. Y'all be stealing black American culture. Y'all only coming for us because our culture is just that prevalent, that prominent. 
And then for old girl who brought it up to be saying, we come over here, we do better than y'all. Baby, if it wasn't for my black indigenous culture here in America, you and whoever else wouldn't even couldn't even come over here. You wouldn't have been able to even come over here. And you only coming over here because your family had the money to come over here. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about how the only Africans who can actually immigrate and go to school and come to America are the ones who daddy doing some corrupt politician stuff. Y'all got money. The only Africans who can afford to come to America and go to school here and be here are the African par uh, parents who have money. So the small percentage of y'all compared to the majority of Africans who are poor, who can't even take a, a vacation to America. Stop playing. Just stop. Stop. Black Americans, we don't check for nobody, bro. Like, we got so much that we deal with on our own. We don't check for no other African people nowhere else. We only be... And we only be worried about ourselves, but all everybody else be checking for us. Everybody else want, coming for us. We don't care about y'all. Like, I don't know. You can, I can guarantee you, you can come up to any black American in America and ask them if they care about if we think or live rent or Africans live rent free in our head. We don't. We don't care. We, we don't be thinking about y'all. We don't think about where y'all at. We don't think about... We don't think about nothing regarding any other African people, like black people at all. But every time I get on this app, it's like every quarter, some African people from the UK, some African people from Nigeria, African people from Ghana, always saying stuff about black Americans. Leave us alone, bro. We're not thinking about you, sweetheart. We're not. I guarantee you we're not. So just stop. My dad, he's Ghanaian. He's American, like... But at the end of the day, I... Saying, I don't know. They're American. I think all Africans that go to university should learn about Pan-Africanism, especially in the United States. I really wish that they would understand that my identity as an African-American is just as valid as a Nigerian, just as valid as a Kenyan or a Ghanaian. I have never touched African soil in my entire life. Matter of fact, I don't feel the need to live in any other country than my own. You guys have to understand 400 years of enslavement. So that probably means that there's probably 10 plus generations that have lived in America and established their own culture. Our identity, our culture, our ethnicity has been shaped by our experiences. That's why a lot of African Americans don't even call ourselves Africans. We call ourselves Black Americans. We say that we are from a state in America. We're not saying that we are not Africans. We're just telling you about the only culture we know. Guys, I'm a sixth generation Texan. I'm also a fourth generation HBCU student. Someone asked me where I'm from, I'm gonna tell them Dallas, Texas. I could take a DNA test all I want. I mean, I just wouldn't feel like I had the same cultural connection to the continent like you guys do. Don't get it twisted, I acknowledge my origin. But you guys have to remember, my identity has been shaped here. What do y'all feel like y'all should do in order to know where you guys come from? Are you guys doing the DNA? Well, nothing, absolutely nothing. We don't need to do nothing to know where we come from because you people that saying that we don't know where we come from do know where you come from but my question is how has that benefited you i mean what i'm saying is that it has not benefited you to know where you come from in africa has not benefited you because your it has it benefited you in a way to keep your countries from being poor i'm sorry has it or maybe it has benefited you in a way where you don't have to keep leaving your countries and having to flee and run over to someone else's country, AKA America, and live off of the works and the good deeds that we have did to build this country. You're living off of our struggles. You getting in here under our struggles. You're getting in here under our work. You're coming off, off the backs of what we built. You're coming here under that. And it's only by the grace of God that our ancestors was able to endure what our people been through in this country. And you're literally coming over here. And instead of being grateful for what you have an opportunity to get, you come over here and you be disrespectful and try to have mouth to talk crazy to us. Because I'm sorry, what, what, what this girl is saying is totally crazy. And I'm sure it's a whole bunch of Africans that feel, this, feel the same way she does. And what's crazy as I've seen the next part of this clip and she was talking about her mama is African-American. I don't even get it. 
because if this is the way she was taught at home, this is a reflection of her home training. Obviously, her she said her Ghani, her daddy was from Ghana, so her Ghani and daddy, I can imagine how they talked to her mother in the house, her African American mother. They probably kicking her up under the refrigerator every day, to be honest. But for her to come over here or be a descendant or I guess like um, a second generation Ghanaian American and, um, you know, sit over here and say disparaging things about African Americans talking about we don't know where we come from. Must we? Must we know what part of Africa that we come from? Because everybody that does know where they come from in Africa, that shit ain't helping them. They still over here begging for green cards. I'm sorry, honey. Come again. How about we do this? Black Americans... African Americans will start caring about what part of Africa we come from. We'll take that more seriously when y'all get Africa the hell together. Because right now, it's a shit show over there. At the end of the day, we have absolutely nothing to prove to Africans, okay? Who are you people anyway for us to prove anything to? Can you even get your own countries together and you want us black Americans to lower ourselves down, come down to your level and start to explain and talk and give explanation? We owe you people nothing. We don't care about any of that, okay? At the end of the day, we don't have to prove anything to Africans, okay? We don't have to prove we black enough, that we African enough, that we African American enough. I don't know what you people are looking for, but we don't have to prove shit to y'all. At the end of the day, you people are nobody for us to have to give explanation to. Go fix y'all countries. Do that. You want to know what's funny? I knew that the whole time. Um, and I felt so bad that I doubled the numbers. I knew I did the math myself. It came out to like five million. And then I asked AI and it, AI said 4.6 million, even less than five million. And I still felt bad enough to double their numbers because I still knew there was more of us here. And they're still over here talking fucking shit. When you're 3% of the population talking crazy. Just because you want a damn green card or whatever the fuck it is. Is that mean? No, that's not mean. That's the truth. You come over here and they're like, listen, those are your cousins over there. Uh, but we're over here running the motherfucking, uh, white supremacist, uh, system. You either join the fucking resistance or you come over here and bootleg and your family's going to be okay. They're like, oh my God, I guess, I, I guess I'm coming over there with you. That's what the fuck they do. But then when we have a problem with some shit, like my brother, my brother, nigga, we the same people. No, the fuck we're not because you're over here fucking kissing a white man's ass. And we told you that that's fucked up. You don't care. You see, you think that they have all the damn power, bro. Yes, they have military power. Yes, they have military force. And we, and they still, when we, when we pop out, we got a problem, we pop out, they call the motherfucking National Guard on us, bro. They don't need to call the National Guard for you motherfuckers. You guys are fucking, that Jedi mind trick that they doing, y'all. They're like, oh, yes, green card, nigga. Yes, whatever you say, white men. <laughs> Yeah, the white man. <laughs> that's how you that's how y'all act, bro. And y'all think we don't have any power, but I'm gonna tell you one power that we do have. We have cultural influence. We decide what's cool in this fucking country. And the moment we decide that y'all niggas ain't cool, that's when y'all gonna feel the heat. Even white people well, white people follow us, bro, when it comes to what's cool. And the moment we decide uh that African shit ain't cool, that Caribbean shit ain't cool, white people were like yeah, man, I guess that shit ain't cool, man. Yeah, man. Fuck that African shit. That's what the fuck they're going to do. Because everybody follows us when it comes to our cultural influence. And that's global. That's what y'all didn't fucking, that's what y'all didn't see coming. So this delineation movement and us saying that we don't fuck with y'all no more. Guess who else ain't going to, guess who else going to stop fucking with y'all? Everybody else that copies us is going to be like, yeah, fuck y'all niggas, bro. And I'm starting to see the effects of it because Africans are starting to come up here like, hey, this ain't cool. Stop fucking with the cousins, blah, blah, blah. They're backtracking. People are coming up on here making videos saying, leave them the fuck alone, bro. We we had our fun. This shit's getting serious. We need to leave. We need to leave our fucking cousins alone because in a few years when everybody's saying, Bro, in a few years when people don't fuck with y'all, bro, because we made it cool to not fuck with y'all, y'all don't understand the cultural influence and the cultural fucking power that we have, that we're ethno-luminous, 
and we have cultural influence, bro. That's the power we have. We might not have motherfucking... Actually, the veterans from our fucking uh, ethnic group, when it comes to the army, if shit really goes down, just like 2020, we will form a militia. We still have active militias around here. But when it comes to like our true power, that's our, that's our cultural influence. To basically make to basically make what y'all about not be cool. And y'all are fucking up, bro. Because that's what's gonna happen pretty soon if y'all don't fucking stop. If you, it, it, not, I'm not talking about you, bro. But I'm talking about these people. If y'all don't fucking stop, what the fuck y'all doing? It's not gonna be fun for y'all in America, bro. I'm telling you. Africa, are you from? I'm from America. That's what we're saying. Just what like a Jamaica. Just like a no, no, no. Hold on. Just like somebody from Jamaica, they're not going to say what country in Africa they're from. Somebody in Haiti is not going to say what country from. They're going to say they're Haitian. Because they were closer from what is it called, the Triangle Slave but Trade. But when they, when you ask them that question, mm -hmm. they're not going to have a definitive answer. That's because they're already in their own community of Caribbeans, the Haitians, Jamaica. They're all like in one bowl. Just as but far Black as Americans are in their own but bowl. Look, <clears throat> that video. Is ridiculous. That woman is ignorant. Asking black Americans where they're from and then not accepting our answer that we are from America because our ancestors have been in America for the past 400 to 500 years. Our ancestor has fought in every war in this country. Our ancestors blood, sweat, tears are in this soil. Our ancestors are buried in this soil. Our ancestor made it, made it right or okay for your people to come over here and benefit here. Instead of trying to disrespect us, in that interview, she went on to continue to be disrespecting and spew some of the same ignorance that a lot of black immigrants do. When they should be thanking us that they're able to flee from their countries instead of fighting in their countries, building up their countries, getting what they deserve in their countries. They flee from their countries, come to here where we fought and we made it OK for you guys to benefit here. Instead of thanking us for that, applauding us for what we've done. And that allowed you to come here and benefit instead of thanking us, you continue to disrespect us. And then he asked her. Why don't you ask Jamaicans, Haitians that? She said, because they have their own bowl in the Caribbean. Talking about their culture. Like black Americans don't have our own culture here. Black Americans are. Have a multi multiple. A multiplicity of cultures in America. American culture is black culture. We have our own food, have our, the way we talk, the way we dress. The only reason you are able to come to America and live here and benefit is because of what we've done. So just like Haitians and Jamaicans, you don't ask them where they're from in Africa because you accept that they're from Haiti and Jamaica and they have their country, countries. Learn to understand that we are from America. We have our own bowl, our own culture in America. For the past 400 500 years stop being ignorant at this point you guys are being willfully ignorant because all the anti-black american things you have in your heart it's ridiculous and for one i'm sick of it that's why I, i'm not for the whole all all black people come together no because until y'all learn to respect us we have to gatekeep because black people are the ones that was, oh, we're all black people. Let's come together. Let's stand. We the ones that was fighting for, for y'all to be able to come over here. We the ones that was fighting for them bills that got passed that allowed immigrants to come over here. Us. America accept y'all because of what we done. Now, but I've, now it's time to stop. Now it's time to put black Americans first and stop worrying about all these other, other immigrants because they come over here and continue to disrespect us. They come over here and don't respect our culture. They come over here and don't respect our history. She didn't even know what the transatlantic slave trade was. So 
triangular slave trade. She didn't even know what it was. Don't know how to pronounce because they don't care about our history. They're not us. We're not the same people. And for the record, my ancestors can trace back. I can trace my ancestors back by 14, 15 generations in America longer than you can in Africa. For the record, if you want to go who can trace who, generation for generation. Black Americans, we have to start gatekeeping. We have to start standing by ourselves, for ourselves. Because of stuff like that in that video. It's ridiculous. If hip hop is black culture and not street culture, as many Hispanic Americans believe it is, then that would mean that black culture is trash. This is exactly what we mean when we say they want all of our rhythm and none of our blues. The second we say no, the second we set a boundary, the anti-blackness is like you can't even contain it. Black culture is trash. And what is street culture? We are not allowing you guys to take away our history. And the problem with individuals like yourself is that you don't even understand what hip hop is. Hip hop isn't just a genre of music. Hip hop isn't just the clothes we wear, the way we speak. We are the culture. We are hip hop. Black people is hip hop. Y'all will do any and everything but give black Americans credit for our influence, for the trends we set, for every genre of music we created, including rock and roll, blues, hip hop, jazz, country music. It's like it makes your ass itch if you're not involved and or included. It, it's, I don't get it. Y'all can be delusional all you want to, but we're not going to allow you to erase our history and we're not going to allow y'all to claim hip hop. I'm sorry. Get over it. Black Americans, I have a question. We have educators. We have doctors. We have lawyers. We have astronauts. We have builders. We have engineers. We have scientists. We have politicians, we have language, we have a flag, we have a name for ourselves. Why haven't someone that's a billionaire bought an island and put us on it? It's only 34 million of us. It's time to wrap this American shit up. Seriously. You should think about it. Get back to me. Start a group chat. To all the black people and all the Latino people, the Mexicans, need y'all to listen up. Did you hear what Trump said yesterday at a rally? And this especially to hit the, uh, the blacks and Latinos who planning on vote for him. Did you hear what he said at his rally yesterday? He said he would get police a one hour purge to come in our community and do what the hell they gotta do to lower this crime. Do y'all understand what that mean, right? Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? He said he would get in one hour to come to our communities and do what the hell they gotta do to get crime down. So that means stopping frisk. That means just pulling us over. That means probably shooting us, tasing us. Anything they want to do with no consequences. If that's what y'all want, then we deserve everything that we got coming to us. If that's what y'all want, a one hour purge on our communities. You have to worry about gas prices. You got to worry about groceries because you're going to be either locked up or dead. Just one hour. He say, just give them one hour, y'all. Just one hour. That's all they need is one hour. Y'all still ain't going to listen. I know it. So, fuck it. Black Americans, I have a question. We have educators, we have doctors, we have lawyers, we have actors. First things first is just the billionaire part. It don't work like that. Uh, even multi-billion dollar companies like Disney borrow money 
to purchase other companies. They never spend their money. That's how you become cash poor. And on the other side of that, let's go get an island and run away. You're not running away from white supremacy. You're not. Uh, two, we don't have a spirit of fleeing. Uh, that fight or flight, we're going to fight. That's why we're still here. And we still fight. Putting our heads down to get kicked in the head is not our thing. So that's why we have it. We absolutely refuse to have anybody run us off our land after we built it up. We're going to fight and get what's owed to us. We're going to get our anti-black hate crime bill. We're going to get reparations. We're going to, it's going to happen. So we're just going to keep fighting. I'm not black. I'm African. Is that not black? No, 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 no. Oh, it's I a big difference. Is. You know what I'm saying? I came in a plane. They came in chains. Yeah. I'm passenger in their cargo. <laughs> Why is he saying that? Yeah. Why is he saying that? Yeah. Why is that so funny? There was nothing funny about that at all. Uh, these, this internet shit isn't real. These are isolated incidences. True. That are supposed to spark diaspora wars and so division between us. Obviously, the majority of Africans love African Americans so much. I got shown so much love that this isn't indicative of any, you know what I mean, large percentage in my from my experience, I don't think this is a large people talk like this or behave this way, especially to make white women laugh on the internet. I just hope that it becomes commonplace, if it's not already, for Africans on the continent to shout that shit down when it happens like in their spaces. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like yeah, that, that's sure. not cool. They're just, they're us. They just, other, so just shout that shit down. Because I try to do that shit when people disparage African people. You know what I mean? Right. Gilbert Arenas, banned. He can <laughs> never come here. This Asian man told me he hates black and white people equally because we the center of everything and we get the best out of life. I said, how do black people get the best out of life? We was they damn slaves. He said, you know white people treat their pets good. <laughs> Ending affirmative action so far has not helped Asian students. If you look at the stats that have been released so far, the universities where they experienced some slight gains have been canceled out by the other universities that experienced you know, slight drops. So on average, it really didn't help us Asians. It did negatively impact a lot for black students and Latino students. For example, at MIT it went from 15% black to only 5% black, which is crazy. So if it didn't help Asians or Black or Latino students, who did it help? It helped white students. So if you're white, this is great. But I want to remind people that during affirmative action, colleges were only selecting qualified students, okay? They weren't selecting students just based on their skin color. That's not how it worked. Yale, Princeton, and Duke have been threatened with a lawsuit over the decline in Asian- Now that you cannot blame Black people, you know, now that you can, you literally cannot say it's because of us because you ended affirmative action. An Asian American man went out of his way to go and put an end to affirmative action, which greatly benefits Asian Americans as well as cisgender white women, the women that they like to marry the most that they meet at the, woo! What's so hilarious is that black people are still going to be going to college, babe. The road for black people to get to college is very arduous and difficult as it is, black Americans, just because of the way that education is set up within this country. Education might as well be a prison pipeline for black people. I know y'all don't want to acknowledge that, but it's like, that's very much, it's a carceral experience for even the best of us. So for us to make it into college, no matter what your upbringing is, private school, public school, homeschool, whatever, that's an accomplishment in and of itself and is to be celebrated. For y'all to try to take that away from people, which is what it was, because Asian Americans specifically have a, a chip on their shoulder when it comes to black people because of their model minority status and they think we just get things for nothing. That shit their parents taught them. It's not our fault. And now you're going to see and learn that whitey doesn't want you either. In fact, they like you less than us. We're entertaining. Black people are seen, when black people are in the same space as white people, listen very carefully. When black people are in the same space as white people and we've made it and we're successful, we're not looked at as conniving. You understand? We're not looked at as thieves. We're not looked at as people that, are, that need to be watched 
that are trying to come for other people's things, spineless, slimy, those are stereotypes that have been levied against the Asian American community. I talk about this regularly on my podcast about how the Asians get a bad rap. But one thing y'all are going to have to learn is that it's not black people that did it to you. You understand? It wasn't us that created Yellow Peril. It wasn't us that when y'all were over here building the American railroad system infrastructure. It wasn't us that said you could not get married over here. That you couldn't have a wife. That wasn't black people. Do you understand? The animosity and the hate in that community's heart for black people. Remember that stop Asian hate bullshit and they made black people the face of it? It wasn't us that, I remember in New York, a lot of my Asian friends were getting harassed in the street. It wasn't black people doing that. It wasn't black people slicing up Asian children's faces in New York City when the pandemic happened, talking about the Wuhan flu and all that other racist bullshit. It wasn't us. It's the people that you're dying to get around that think you're spineless. All of these fucking stereotypes about Asian men not being virile, being, um, what is the word, shady, being villains, be always being cast in, as villains in the media. I did a whole episode about this. That's whitey. All this sexual fetishization of the, the docile Asian woman, was it, was it us that did that? No, it was Chad, Tom, Kale, Brent. It was them niggas that did that to you, babe. The same niggas you're pressed to have a baby with. The same niggas you're pressed to get around. And they look down on you. It wasn't us that put you in internment camps. You see what I'm saying? Instead of talking about the actual disenfranchisement that you have experienced in this country by you know who, you always want to come at us and talk about what we're not doing. Babe, we're still going to be in, in we're still going to be at Yale, Howard, Brown, Dartmouth, Oberlin. Where boys and girls can all be queens every single day. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> hey, hell no, either, man. <laughs> if you haven't seen the documentary Buck Breaking, you need to go watch it. That's all. That's the post. Gentrification is a mad thing, bro. If I took you out of some of my neighbors I grew up in back in the day, a lot of you will be looking at me like I'm crazy. Like, this is the soft, cotton ass neighborhood you grew up in. And I'm like, no, bro, this is different. Like, my parents, specifically, a lot of the OGs, but my parents used to say, Every time they saw a white person walking in their neighborhood back in the day, they would be on some like, you got lost? Like, what the fuck you doing over there? And that's what I'm starting to notice. Like, I'm seeing places I grew up in. I'm like, bro, this is a completely different world. I'm seeing people walking in the nighttime. Don't got to look over their shoulder. I'm seeing a lot of diversity, seeing a lot of white people. Every time you see white people in your neighborhood, just know they colonize and they, they buying that shit up and they going to kick your ass up. I'm just keeping it a buck. I'm not trying to sound racist or anything. Every time you see white people in your neighborhood that you've never seen them in before in large numbers, they're buying that shit up. I'm just keeping it a buck. So I'm starting to see that with myself. It was neighborhoods where my mother was like, to me and my siblings, we're going to leave in the morning. We're not going outside in the night. This is not a neighborhood that we could go outside in the night. Like there's kids getting shot in the chest across the street. Like this is what was going on. A lot of neighbors I was growing up in like, and I was scared a lot of times. Like I'm not going outside. I'm not trying to get shot. I'm not trying to bump into gang members, none of that. And to see, like, people are just walking with a smile on their face in the nighttime, like, not looking over their shoulder. I'm like, man, this is not what it was 10, 15 years ago. No, no, no. Kamala identified as black when she attended the HBCU. That mess can't spread and don't make no sense. Girl, let's do a little lesson today. Let's do a little lesson for the class. You don't have to be black to go to a HBC. You, you can be white. You can be Indian. You can be Indian and Asian too. <laughs> Does this piss you off? Because do you want to know what pisses me off? The fact that my ancestors fought way too hard for black people to be allowed to learn how to read just for y'all to expect me to be uneducated enough to support Kamala Harris for the sole reason that y'all claim she's black. Kamala Harris could be as dark as a P. Diddy party and I still wouldn't vote for that godless she-devil. The Democrats are the reason that so many black boys are illiterate. The Democrats are the reason that so many black communities are ridden with poverty. The Dem Democrats are the reason that black people are begging from handouts from mass to government. And the Democrats are the reason that so many black people are wanting black only spaces 
aka segregation. It's as if the Democrats are trying to bring back slavery and Jim Crow, considering they were the party that was in favor of those two eras in the first place. Yet, y'all are so brainwashed by Democratic propaganda that you call me a sellout because I don't buy into the narrative that the Democrats own me and my unwavering loyalty simply because of my skin color. There is no self-hatred in my body because I am proud to be a black American, so much so that I am going to vote this November for the man who almost lost his life twice to fight for my country and to fight for my home. And that man is Donald Jaquan Trump. And notice I didn't stutter. I went to his IG. I don't think he's FBA at all. Like, the Russo is his last name. Du Russo. D-U-R-O-S-S. -S. It's a lot of letters. I don't think he's FBA at all. IG, I was like, maybe this is a performative name. Nah, that's the name he's going with. So, until further notice, he's not an FBA. So, this whole... My family fought for this, that, and other. I'm like, mm. And we don't really go for MAGA like that. It's usually the immigrant. So he got some good points in there, but I think he's tethered. As more production move overseas or across the border, the UAW is losing more bargaining power. The Durango Hellcat, well, not Durango Hellcat, but just the Durangos in general, are getting moved out of Detroit and going to get built in Canada for the next generation. And part of the Jeep Grand Cherokee Air production is now being put in Egypt. Every time Solana shift production abroad, they are taking American jobs with them, and the UAW workers are left behind as more and more quality is getting worse and worse and worse. And Solana is trying to point the fingers at them when Solana should be pointing the fingers at themselves because it is their fault for using these cheap components and expecting the, the workers to just make uh make lemonade out of coal. Truck drivers, let me tell you something about this port shutdown. You about to run up a bag if you know what you're doing. Now, I wasn't even gonna make a video about this at first, but I see so many people making videos, so many truck drivers making videos about it, and I realized y'all don't understand how this industry work. Once congestions happen, you know what's gonna happen when congestion hit? They gonna need you out there. Let me show you something. Let me explain something to y'all. This is live camera footage. Well, it's updated every 10 seconds. You see the time, 1934. It says 1935. It's going to probably update just a, f a few seconds. It just updated. But um, usually there are ships lined up up here at the ports, and they are usually unloading containers. And I can usually watch them unload the containers that I'm waiting on. That way I can tell my truck drivers when to go there and to go pick up their container. But look at this load. Up. This is another um, port right here. It's the exact same thing. Nothing's being unloaded. And usually this is a 24-hour operation where they're unloading containers. But right now, nothing is being unloaded. And that's going to cause a severe backup. Now, they just came out with a new vessel schedule uh, earlier today at about 540. Now, these three ships are actually scheduled to come in on the 3rd. But that's only if the strike ends. And that means they're going to always be updating this and the more ships that don't come in it's going to get congested congested and congested and now ships are going to be just waiting in the middle of the ocean this is actual a ship that i was waiting on a cargo to come in but now it's just sitting in the middle of the ocean waiting for the ports to open back up who knows they can be sitting out there for some weeks some months they're going to sit out there as long as the strike is going on and then it's, it's their time to go off in there and make their delivery but right now all these are just ships that are just sitting in the middle of the ocean. And they can't, because I know I heard somebody say, oh, well, they can just go deliver to California if they can't. They, you can't make a delivery. You're just going to have to sit there and wait. You can't go around. Then they're going to go around to South America and then come back up here. No, they just got to sit there and wait. And plus, they'll be burning too much fuel. But if you over here in California, if you know how to charge your rates, you're supposed to be running up a bag right now because there's so many ships. And each one of these ships is carrying 500 to 5,000 on containers and so they going to need truck drivers it's probably it's probably going to be packed over here so you need to be charging high rates congestion fees these detention fees whatever fees you need to charge because right now you can pretty much charge whatever you want because they need you severely bit real bad right now but usually i only focus on this area because it's the area i'm usually focusing on texas but it's going to be the same way over here too Oh, even over here in Florida, these ships are going to have to just sit here because they cannot make no delivery until they get the green light that they can come in and make that delivery. Now, the longer that them ships sit out in the ocean, it's going to be just like COVID-19 again. COVID-19. Remember what happened with COVID-19, right? You remember them rates in COVID-19? You remember how they shot up? 
because it was so much freight sitting out of the ports. And then when they opened the ports back up, all of a sudden, all the ports were coming in with so much freight that you was able to charge whatever you wanted to charge. The longer that the port shut down, the most likely that that's going to happen. So it's actually going to benefit you for it to actually shut down for maybe about a week or two. If it shut down for probably about a, a full week or two, you're going to be in the, in, in the money. I guarantee it if you know how to get your contracts. And I mean, I, I hate to say it, but my people that's inside the A to Z train the Ultra, I done already showed you in there how to get to the ports and how to sign up at the ports. So um, if you know what you're doing or if you've already signed up, you need to go off in there, go sign up at the ports like I done already done showed you. You need to be getting in contact with your freight forwarders, like I already told you, and your customer brokers, like I, I showed you how already, because they about to get ready to have all the freight for you. Just do what I done already showed you how to do. Labor unions used to be really powerful in America. It's happening, y'all. So today kicked off one of the largest strikes in recent history. A little over 45,000 dock workers are stopping work, causing huge disruption in international trade. They're stopping work because they're demanding better wages, better benefits, working conditions in the face of rising inflation and corporate profits. This is a big deal because without dock workers to load and unload, containers just sit, okay? Goods can't be moved in or out of ports. The supply chain hits a bottleneck and ends up costing the industry billions of dollars a day. The dock workers are speaking in the only language unfettered capitalism understands, and that is moolah. Even though the dock workers play a main character in keeping supply chains moving, they are often underpaid compared to the massive profits that are being generated by the companies that they work for. So a lot of these corporations are recording record profits, record earnings, yet they've been hella stingy about sharing those profits with the workers who make those operations possible. So let's talk about what we might be seeing in the future. Public enemy number one is going to be disruptive supply chains. Because the dock workers are on strike, we can definitely expect delays when it comes to goods being able to move through those major ports. These things can lead to shortages. They can lead to higher prices. They can lead to delays in manufacturing. And we're kind of at this standstill until both parties decide or both parties agree on negotiations. And given that over 50% of the goods that we receive, things like cars and electronics and certain types of food, they all come in through those ports. Depending on how long this lasts, it might not be felt immediately, but if it does, you're definitely going to be able to see it play out in your local life. We're going to see economic pressures, so retailers, manufacturers, they're going to feel the pressures first as inventories start to dwindle, and then they could pass those costs onto us as consumers. So that looks like increasing the cost of your daily goods, the things you're buying on a day-to-day -day basis. Even though it just started today, there's already businesses that are upset with Biden for not forcing the dock workers to go back to work or by using Taft Harley, which is essentially saying, hey, y'all need to go back to work and figure this out while you're working, but you can't stop working. But Biden's already expressed his belief in the right of workers to use collective bargaining, which is basically just saying that he believes in workers being able to use the power of standing together as a group to make the corporate overlords pay attention. Side note, when the West Coast dock workers went on their strike back in 2014 or 2015, someone fact checked me on that, it lasted nine months with the peak of the strike causing the industry to lose about $2 billion per day at its peak. But you know, so close to the holiday season, there's no telling if this strike will last that long. But with that being said, here's what we're not going to do, okay? We are not going to blame the workers. I can't stress enough how important it is that you are able to resist the narrative that blames the workers for causing disruptions with the strike. Dock workers are fighting for fair pay and better conditions. These are fundamental rights. They wouldn't have to fight for them if they were being given willingly. Wages have not kept up with the cost of living. That is the reality of the situation in America. It doesn't matter, even if someone is making more than you, Americans overall aren't making enough or receiving enough benefits to match their productivity. That's the reality, okay? Argue with your mama. Another thing that we aren't going to do is ignore corporate profits, okay? A lot of the companies that are involved are posting record profits. And they can afford to pay workers more, but they are truly choosing not to. The focus needs to be on the corporate decision makers and the billionaires who are prioritizing profit over the well-being of their workers. We're also not going to allow misinformation to spread and we're not going to choose to ignore the broader context, okay? Avoid false narratives or buying into the claims that dock workers are being unreasonable. They're not. It's important that we truly prioritize 
the fact that these workers are fighting against inequality and unfair treatment in a system where the wealth that is being generated is not being shared equally. When we choose to ignore these larger systems at play, we completely undermine the long-term support for labor rights, okay? What we're gonna do instead? We might want to rethink how we are going to approach Christmas this year. I'm just gonna give you the book, okay? Christmas and Black Friday. If this strike lasts, you can definitely be sure that certain consumer products, decorations, imported items, things like, you know, things like chocolate, you're gonna see the price reflected because of the supply and demand. But I think it's important not to panic, okay? And maybe, hear me out, maybe it's okay to not overconsume this year. Maybe it's okay to help more, share more, avoid panic stockpiling, donate, reuse, repurpose. Perhaps it's time to get a little bit cozier with our local farmer's market, but even then still might be able to feel the strike reflected there too. Just most importantly, pay attention. Paying attention to corporations who use this opportunity to price gouge. There's a difference between inflation and price gouging, okay? Clock them. On the other hand, we're gonna pay attention to corporations who choose to use this time or choose to look at what's happening and be proactive with making changes that actually benefit their workers. Pay attention to those entities too, because they're out there. Make sure that you keep your focus on the billionaire class that controls these corporations and use this strike as an opportunity to discuss labor rights and if we ourselves feel that our rights are being represented. Hello, I am Demetria Smith and I represent Reserve Your Rights, Texas. I didn't come here to beg and I invoke each and every one or last one of you folks today. Today we stand here as we the people and we have a social compact and that is the United States Constitution for America. Each and every last one of you has an oath and a bond, and you owe the American people, the beneficiary to the Constitution, a performance. And that bond secures that performance. Each and every one of these people back here are the beneficiary. We have ordained and established this Constitution. We have established this justice system. Our founding fathers left it now up to us because now we are the descendants in the homeland. And today, we do not come here to beg you to do anything. You have an oath, you have a constitutional duty to exactly examine each and every judge that have that oath. Since you want to be the institution that's in place of that, we expect you to perform your duties. Too often, the judges have reversed the courts and they come up with this democracy. We are a republic, and we are a republican form of government where the people rule and not the government themselves. That is an also Texas, a Texas government code 552.001. The people are the master, the government are the servants. With that being said, we come in to demand you all to do your job since you promised us a performance to do that job. Each judge across America, in the United States of America, have too often made the people a slave by misidentifying the people as vessels, as cargoes, as fictitious persons, as in legions. We are the beneficiaries in this country. So today is not the day that anybody weep and cry anymore. Do your job and perform your abilities because you have access to the public trust. You all are the trustees and we are the beneficiaries. And now that you have access to the public trust, you have the access to the people funds, the people are always performing. Now it's your turn to perform unto your constitutional oath and your bonds that secure it. We are all in contract with each and every last one of these judges, officials, and you too. I am Demetria Smith. Let's have a conversation. What is this thing that we have become conditioned to talking about? This made up thing called toxic masculinity. You all do know that a gay man came up with that terminology. 
I know that's not shocking. But yeah. Toxic masculinity. What that's telling me is we want men to show up in more of a feminine energy. And if they don't show up soft, if they don't show up with a hint of femininity, then there's a problem. Well, (laughs) I'm going to tell you, I prefer my man to show up in his full masculine energy, okay? Full masculine energy. That way, I can show up in my full feminine energy energy that's the way it's supposed to be so women i'm gonna talk to you guys first let's stop using this toxic masculinity terminology it's not real it's made up let's allow our men to be men and our women to be women there's nothing wrong with that that's not an attack on anyone it's allowing us to us to show up as we are meant to show up just leave us alone leave feminine women alone leave masculine men alone Come on, let's stop it. Because I need my men to show up masculine, okay? (laughs) Thanks. This is why black men aren't in the church anymore. Y'all watch this. And the husband's like, she don't do this, she She don't don't do that. that. Mm -hmm. And I be working hard and getting no respect. respect. I just be looking at him like, man, it sounds like you're dying. He's like, this is exactly how I feel. I said, that means you're doing it right. You wasn't meant to live through this marriage, fam. You came down to an altar. What do you think happens at altars? Sacrifice. Because really in his position, he would have took the fruit out of her hand and chucked it and then went straight to God on E's behalf to say, I know she should die. Take me instead. According to this man, if you're being disrespected, if you feel like you're dying in your marriage, if your wife isn't doing what she's supposed to do, according to this preacher here, because I believe he's a preacher or a pastor or something, you're doing it right. Like, I was wondering, like, where black women got this delusion from that we supposed to just suffer. Like, but it's like him, it's Dr. Umar saying, hey, black men who don't have any kids and black men who can't tell black women who and who not to sleep with we're responsible for you choosing bad partners like y'all are being pimped and y'all don't even see it because i'm sure after he made that dumb statement they took up a very nice offering and he probably got paid handsomely for that bs that came out of his mouth that is absolutely ridiculous that is absolutely ridiculous i can't believe he said some stuff like that with a straight face y'all are getting played by dudes who look good and look smart and who talk real good but they running game on y'all just like pookies like they pookies and and and, and the cleaned up dudes in the church is running a running running game on y'all because i'm sure he made a bunch of money like that that is ridiculous that is the most ridiculous thing that i have ever heard i'm supposed to if if i'm suffering in my marriage and my wife is disrespecting me that I'm doing it right. And then he used Adam and Eve as like an example and said, even though Eve ate the apple, he should have grabbed the apple from her, chucked it in the air. And then when God came and was about to give Eve her consequences for disobeying him, that he should have said, no, God, don't, 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 uh, don't, don't hurt her. You know, just I, I'll go. What? The church, (laughs) the church is pimping y'all. The church is pimping y'all. The therapist is pimping y'all. And Pookie and Ray Ray is pimping y'all. 
Hey, pimp hard, pimp harder.